Hey class, I'm excited. I like today's lecture. A whole lecture on color. I, I, <laughs> uh, one, I learned about um, tell your story in 10 minutes. Create a free video memoir about your experiences at the U. Open now. Walk-ins, welcome. Uh, who knows about this? Anybody already? You can, uh, every semester, go to the library, and they'll record you. You can, like, your own little video memoirs. It's like your own little journal slash scrapbook. And they'll, uh, you know, take it for you, compile it. And you can do it every semester. So, like, by the time you, you leave here, you'd have uh, a little video of your uh, experiences and thoughts of the U. If anybody's interested, I, I want to just let you know. It's uh, first floor Marriott Library. Um, if you enter from the lower side on the west side, you enter. It's, uh, you come in past the little lounge area on your left. I think it says Faculty Center. It's room 1705, but I have a few of these. You can take one if you're interested. If we run out, uh, you can look it up. <laughs> Create a free video memoir. So, wanted to let you know about that. Let's see, Rachel's not here, so I won't say that announcement. Okay. So, light comes in, we learned, into an object. And what can it do? How can it in light interact with an object different ways? Tell me something. What can it do when it interacts with that object? There's some options. Give me one. It can resonate with it. Good. That's when the driving frequency of the light makes this one to resonate at that frequency, and it naturally wants to. Then they, re they resonate. And what would happen to that light then? It wouldn't go through. Would it come out? Would it reflect back? If it's resonating, it's, what's it going to do to the molecules inside? It's going to make it move a lot because it takes a little energy and resonance and it gives them big amplitude. And they're going to start moving around and increase the, we call it, internal energy. Yeah, and part of that, it might heat up. Part of internal energy, remember, is that average kinetic Translational kinetic energy. If it increases that also, yeah, its temperature goes up. So usually if it's resonating, it gets absorbed. If it's off resonance, it'll still make the things wiggle, but they won't wiggle as much, so you don't dissipate as much energy. And so the light can come back out, either reflecting, and we'd say the object is opaque, or transparent, it passes through. That's when it's off resonance. Does the same light exit that enters? No, correct. Because each, you know, one light wave comes in whoosh, and it absorbs it. And the electrons actually have, you know, some um, energy levels, they transitions or whatever. And when they go back to normal, they give off the same frequency of light, but it's a different light wave. And then its neighbor might absorb that one and it gives it energy. And when he relaxes, he gives off and so on, until you get to the end, and he might give off a completely different, well, he does give off a completely different wave than what came in. Also, that's what takes time. That's why light slows down when it goes through something. And the more interactions you have, the longer it takes. The slower light travels through that medium. Light travels a lot slower in diamond than it does in water. So that was... Uh, our quick review of last lecture. Today, we get to mix colors. White light is made up of all colors. So I'm going to turn this projector on. And you get a white light over there. Then I put a prism, piece of glass, the light's going to slow down when it goes through it. But what else happens? Because it slows down, 
Do you remember our wheel and axle analogy with sound waves? If you got two wheels on an axle and it's coming through like a wheel here and a wheel here and it's going along and this side starts entering the glass and slows down. This side's still going fast in air. So this will rotate just like wheels on an axle would. If this gets slowed down and this one's going fast, it rotates, it bends. We call that refraction. So as it enters the glass, it refracts. And so instead of getting ending up over there, it comes over here. And different colors are different frequencies. They interact with the glass differently. Do you remember who has the higher frequency? This side, purple or red? I was just waiting to hear more people. Cause <laughs> yeah, this side has higher frequency. These are longer waves, lower frequency. Higher frequency, shorter waves. These then will, cause more inter will have more interactions in the glass. So it refracts more than red does. It actually travels more slowly in the glass than the red does because there's more interactions, higher frequency. So it gets bent more. And you can spread the colors out into a rainbow. But the white light we saw on the wall is composed of all colors mixed together. Question. Yes. So is there a way to show visually gamma rays? Is there a way to visually show gamma rays? No, our eyes can't see gamma rays. We can only see visible light. We pretend with uh, infrared. Do you remember our infrared camera? The camera is sensitive to it, but it converts that into an optical wavelength you know, in, as brightness, where it was brighter, it was hotter, more infrared, and the darker, the colder. But we can't see infrared or anything else except the visible light, those colors we just saw. Let's see how they mix. And hopefully this doesn't hit you in the eye. <laughs> it's not that bright, but it's annoying, right? So uh, start with green. There's green light. What color will the shadow be? Black. <laughs> Opaque object blocks the light from getting to the screen there. So it's black. So like negative space? Negative space is a way to think of it. And remember, there's two types of shadows, or two parts to a shadow. You get the dark spot called the umbra, and the fuzzy part where it's partially blocked. Light from one side gets blocked, but not the other. That's called the penumbra. So the umbra and the penumbra. That still happens with just one color. We're going to have blue. And we're going to have red. Well, what happens when you mix red and blue light? What color do you get? Purple? Sort of. And this is where it gets fun. Most of you have learned color mixing with pigments and paints and crayons. We're mixing light now. We call this additive color mixing because we're adding colors of light together, projecting them. And red light mixed with blue light creates magenta. That's called magenta. Magenta. What do you think blue with green make? Yellow? You do? Light green. <laughs> What'd you say? Light green? Let's see. So blue light and green light Combine to mix to a color we call cyan. Cyan. And last but not least, how about green with red? Yellow. 
I am making CMYK with the RGB. And that'll make more sense to the rest of you if you don't know what I'm talking about in a moment. <laughs> Red with green. Combine and make yellow. I think that's cool. What that tells me is, um, you got yellow on. So the light from the yellow in your clothes, it's reflecting off of your clothes. And light is entering my eyeballs. And it's actuating red and green sensitive sensors. Remember the rods and the cones? There's two types of sensors in your eyeball that resonate with these incoming frequencies. One of the, the cones do color, the rods are light and dark. There's three types of cones. And they are sensitive to low frequencies, mid frequencies, and high frequencies. For simplicity, where they peak red, green, and blue. So we call those three colors the primary colors of light. Let's add blue back in. Because when you mix all three of those colors, you get white. Primary colors are, you can't mix two of them and create the third. But you can mix any combination of the three and get any other color. And so based on our physiology, what we're responsive to, red, green, and blue are the primary colors of light, or the additive primary colors. Those are the three you can mix and get other colors. Again, red and blue make magenta. Blue and green, cyan. Green and red, yellow. All three white. You with me so far? There's a whole chapter on this. It's 27. I love this. And you will need to know what makes what. I'll hold you to that. Here's my all-time favorite thing. When I, you can't, if you can't tell by now, I, I love demonstrations. been doing it for many, 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 many years. When I saw this for the first time, I got more excited about it than any other demo I've, I've done since. I, I might have another all-time favorite now, but when I, when I first saw this, I thought it was awesome. And it's the shadows that get made. Okay, when you block green, you get black. When you block blue, you get black. Where's that? There. And same with red. What about cyan? What if I block the cyan? Make green? A green shadow? Let's see. You do. You get a green shadow. But you also get a blue one. Why? Go for it. The, 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 he said it better than I did. <laughs> There's two colors making it from two projectors. And they're not coming from the same place. That's not a point light source. So, so I can point and do this at the same time. Okay. Here, I'm blocking the blue light from hitting the screen right there. So only green hits the screen. And here, the green light's being blocked, but not the blue. You can get a similar thing in the magenta. You get a red and blue shadow. In the yellow, red and green. And my favorite, white. You get three shadows. Let's, let's go through them here. What two colors make yellow? Red and green. So those are the two that are hitting the screen there. What's getting blocked? Blue. blue. Yeah. So start thinking yellow is not blue. <laughs> It'll help you. Here, magenta. What two make magenta? Red and blue. So green's getting blocked. You can think of magenta as not green. And cyan. Is red, uh, blue and green lights hitting the screen there? So which one's getting blocked? Red. red, yeah. And cyan is not red. Now, we call these the complementary colors. Cyan, magenta, and yellow. Cyan, magenta, and yellow. They're the complementary colors because they are the complements of the primary colors. If you mix cyan... With red, what do you think you'd get? Cyan with red. Cyan is what two colors? Blue and green. 
They make cyan. The color that's not in there is red. What if we add red to cyan and, I mean, green and blue? You get white. So you're, you're right. So cyan and red, which are complements of each other, mix to make white. And it, it works the other way too. Yellow is red and green. Mix it with its complement of blue and you get white. And same with magenta and green. Magenta and green make white. Yellow and blue make white. Okay. to do with frequencies. I, I, I won't lie, I don't fully understand your question, but I think the short answer is no. Each of these colors is a different frequency. The three cones in our eye respond to those different frequencies differently. So when we see blue, that's only activating our blue sensors, our blue cones. Or, it's, or at least I can honestly say it has the largest peak signal. The, the, the signals overlap a little, but it's strongest at blue, and, that, and the other at green and red. And so I'm trying to teach you how when they mix, these are the colors we see. So when red and green light enter our eye, the red cones are activated, the green cones are activated, they both send signals to our brain, and our brain says, ah, that's yellow, not red and green when you get the two signals at the same time. And that same for the, all the other mixtures. And you know what? Before I do the filtering, whose favorite color is not on there? What's your favorite color? Purple. So can you get purple? With, yeah, you can with light too, though. These are the primary colors. We should be able to get any color. Well, we've mixed them, but you can also change their intensities. So, let's get rid of green, because it probably has to do with red and blue light. Let's decrease, say, the blue light and see what happens. No, let's decrease the red light and see what happens. See, the shade of purple changes, doesn't it? What's somebody else's favorite color that wasn't up there? How about your shirt? That's my favorite color, orange. Which two do you think is closest to orange? Red and green. That's right. Yellow. Let's decrease the green a little. That's not green. <laughs> hey, look at that, orange. If I decrease red a little and green some more, orange kind of turns into a brown. So you can get those other shades with changes of intensity. Another example, all three make white. Decrease all of them. And you kind of get a gray. And if you get rid of all three, you know what color you end up with. It's not a color. The absence of light is black. That looks good. Good enough. Now let's start looking at some objects. This is blue. So when you shine, or what color does it absorb? Good. Every color but blue. So let me ask it this way. What colors, what frequencies, colors, resonate with this material? Red and green. Because they're getting absorbed. Blue doesn't resonate. It makes them vibrate, but not as much. And it re-emits. 
the blue frequency because it's opaque. And that's why it looks blue to us because blue light is reflecting back into our eyes. So if you shine blue light on this, what color will it look? Blue. Yeah. A little darker because you have less light on it. But it still looks blue, I hope, to you. What about red? What if we put it in the red light? He says purple. Blackish. Because only red light's shining on it. It absorbs red light. So there's no light to bounce back. The only light it reflects back is blue. No blue light's coming to us. No light's coming back off of us, at us. So it looks blackish. This isn't a pure blue. Same with green. Let's see. To me, that looks a little tealish. But this isn't a pure blue like that. So some of, the, some, of the, some of this reflects a little bit of green. This color reflects a little bit of green. It's like dark green, like forest green. Yeah, but it absorbs a lot of the green and all the red, it looks like. Let's try a different color. How about red? Here's my red. It's not a true red, but that's all right. In red light, it reflects the red light because it doesn't resonate with it. How about blue light? That's right. At least a lot darker. There must be a little bit of blue it reflects. Because, it, again, it's not a true red. But most of the blue, it re resonates with it and it gets absorbed. Green. Yeah, dark brown. Let's try another one. How about orange? That should have some red and green in it, right? Coming back to us, but it absorbs mostly blue. So let's start with blue. Yeah, a lot darker. Not completely black, so there's some blue in that shade of orange. Green, still looks pretty orange to me. And over in the red, it's kind of a red-orange, as you might expect. Because orange reflects some red and green light back. Got any questions so far? Where's black? Black is the absence of any light reflecting back at you. So her black pants absorb, resonate all visible light. So nothing reflects back. So no light hits our sensors. None of them are activated. And we say, hey, that's black. <laughs> but this is, I just think that's so cool. All right. I forgot to lower the screen. Now let's do the pigments. That was additive primaries, red, green, and blue. Additive color mixing. Now we're going to do subtractive color mixing, what you're more used to with pigments. So I have a cyan pigment here, and it's taking the white light that goes through it. And what gets absorbed by this color? Red. They all get absorbed by this? Right. The red gets absorbed, resonates. Blue and green get through, and we see cyan. Yeah, close enough. It won't matter. I have a yellow one and a cyan or magenta one. These are the subtractive primaries. They're the complementary colors of mixing light. But when you're mixing pigments, you can think of them as the primaries. This is what most people are used to. They generally like to call them, you're probably red, yellow, and blue. And that's because we don't teach little Timmy, can you say cyan? <laughs> How about magenta? But these would be the true subtractive primaries of color, cyan, magenta, and yellow. 
So let's mix uh, two of them. This one filters out which color? Green. This one filters out which color? Which one do you think will get through both? This filters red. This filters green. So when you overlap, yeah, you get blue. And that'd work if you take paint and you put magenta paint that reflects red and blue. Cyan paint on top of it will reflect blue and green. What's the only one that reflects off of both? Blue. So that's why when you mix paint pigments that way, you're just absorbing and filtering light that our eyes respond to. Does that make sense? So again, another way to think of this. Cyan is not yellow. Magenta is not green. So what's left? Blue. Let's do two more. How about cyan and yellow? What do you think we'll get? Cyan and yellow. Cyan is not I said not yellow before, didn't I? Just a moment ago. Blue is not yellow. I apologize. Yeah, this is not red. Very good. Yellow is not what? Blue. So not red, not blue. What will we get? Green. Yeah. Because I want you to know this, and it's going to apply to everything else, I'll be redundant. This lets red and green light through. This lets blue and green. So green's the only one that makes it through both, or off of both, not, not absorbed. And last but not least, magenta and yellow make red. Because yellow blocks blue, magenta blocks green. So we're left with red. And see here in the middle, you're blocking all three. So it's black. All wavelengths are getting absorbed, filtered. So how is it different from the last How's it different than that? This one is additive. We're mixing colors of light, combining light. Here we're filtering it and subtracting ones out. We still see light in both cases. This one we add them. Here we remove some, and we're, what we're seeing is like the leftovers, if you will. So related, uh, his blue jacket. Now nah, we did blue. Let's pick something else. Uh, guys have blasé colors on today. <laughs> his orange shirt. We'll go back to that one. Thanks for coming. <laughs> what light's reflecting off of his orange shirt? Red and green. Correct. So it's absorbing blue. So that's a pigment in his shirt, a dye that's absorbing, subtractive mixing. So you can, you can make any color of light using the primaries, additive primaries, red, green, and blue. Those are the true, authentic primaries. The complementary colors we can call the subtractive primaries, magenta, cyan and yellow and ink people use that Brian you mentioned it the CMYK C M Y and then they throw in black for shading and contrast printers use that look in your your inkjet printer and what colors do you see cyan magenta and yellow and black look on a cereal box or the newspaper color newspaper or magazines or anything like that where you're filtering the colors and you can see the colors they use cyan, magenta, and yellow and often black. That's all you need to make any other color. But then go look at your TV set the screen or your monitor what three colors would you expect to see? Red, green, and blue because they're the primary colors of light. Get a magnifying glass. If you don't have one put a drop of water on there. It'll refract the light and magnify it and you'll see little pixels dots red green and blue get yellow up on your monitor look closely you should see which two color dots 
for yellow. Red and green. It works. It's awesome. <laughs> it's neat when you see black on your screen. That's just where no pixels are lit up. It's, just, it's like your screen's turned off there. That's easy. Here's an example. Now I want to focus. <laughs> there ish. Nice color of a structure at the planetarium in San Francisco. But all it is is four different uh, transparencies. I have the yellow portion of the spectrum, magenta, cyan, and black. They're just filtering each color in turn. Let's just do the magenta and yellow. And you can see the, some of the reds, oranges. If you do the cyan with the yellow, you can see the greens. And all of them back together. Hard part's keeping them aligned. Whoop, a little twisted there, but you get the idea. That's how you can get all, all the colors with pigments, subtracting, filtering, absorbing the colors. The black one gives you the definition of your rod, right? That allows you to see. Yeah, black is changing the intensity. Yeah. Yeah, it adds contrast, and that your rods come into play there, too. Yes. So in like 3D pictures, when in magazines or like all 3D movies, when you have just the red and blue, um, is that doing with? Uh, those anaglyph glasses for 3D, they're usually like a kind of a red, magenta, and cyan, or blue. Um, no, they're not mixing colors for this idea. They're doing that because we have two eyes, and we, it's called stereoscopic vision. Each eye sees a slightly different image. Like when I did the pendulum, the pulphric pendulum, last time, each eye has a slightly different angle at the, at the object. So... If the cyan colored image is shifted and looks a little different than the red one, and you put glasses on with those filters, each one, this eye could see one of the images, not the other, and vice versa. So you're getting two different images like from two different places, and your brain has to combine that signal and can add depth. Because it's like, whoa, whoa, it looks like that one's coming from over here and that one from over there, and your brain says the only way that can happen is if Somehow the object started from here or behind it, depending on how they shift them. And that adds depth. They could have used any colors, but it's nice to use the subtractive primaries, magenta, cyan, or yellow. Because if you put some other colors, they might block out some light, but not all. And you want each eye to only see one image at a time, not some light from each one because that would, wouldn't enhance the effect. Ah, now the bulbs are cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What color is this ball? I hear a magenta, I heard a white. There's different answers, and this is why you're saying, telling different answers. In the most part, it's kind of white-ish, maybe a little heavy on the red side, so yeah, magenta. But watch what happens. There's three LEDs inside it flashing really fast, on and off, but in turn, in sequence. Red, green, and blue the additive primaries. So if they're all flashing really fast, it's like they're all on at the same time to our eyes. I'll turn the lights back on because it's really hard to sign in the dark. <laughs> so when you flash red, green, and blue really fast, you see white. 
what do we know? Since it looked magenta-ish, the red LED is brighter than the blue and green one, isn't it? Shame on that. But hey, it was a free, inexpensive toy. Okay, so you're going to need to practice all this mixing stuff. I'm going to hold you to it. What colors, when they combine, give what? Whether you're adding or subtracting. Let's say, here's some green glass. We kind of did it with an overhead. What light goes through it? What color goes through it? Yes, it's easy. Green. That's why it looks green. It transmits green. Green does not resonate with the dye in this glass. Let's see. Let's turn this on. Does the light look green to you? Yeah. All right. What if I reflect the light off of it? What color will the light look like then? So I can see it right now. I can see its reflection. What color is the reflection? Vote for green. If green goes through it, there's no green left to reflect back. It's tinted glass. Yeah, there's a dye in it, a pigment that's filtering out all colors but green. It's white, actually. And I know you can't all see this. But maybe we can do it in the dark. Let's see. Let's try. I don't need it that dark. Let's try this. So this is the light. The light that goes through it, this filters out all but green. So that looks green. But let's reflect light off of it. See, it's white. Because nothing is, some of the light reflects off the first surface. And it's never had a chance to get absorbed or filtered. So it's still all colors. The light that reflects, it's still white. But the light getting through gets filtered and it's green. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Good. Now something interesting when you go try it, the light, some of the light reflects off the back surface. So the stuff that reflects off the front is white. The stuff that reflects up, goes through, reflects off the back and comes back out is green. Because it's gone through the glass twice. And so it has been filtered. So, because I know all of you are going to go home and practice. This is how I do it. Maybe it will help you. You don't have to write it all out. Red plus green plus blue is? Good. Red plus green is? Yellow. Red plus blue? Good job, magenta. Green and blue? Cyan. How about magenta and green? Light. What color is magenta? Red and blue. So this is like red plus blue plus green. Yeah, you get white. Because magenta is red and green light. Uh, red and blue light, sorry. How about... Yellow and blue. Think about what yellow is. Yellow is red and green. Add blue, yeah, you get white. And the other pair is cyan and red. You get white. So these are complementary colors. As I showed you over there, when they mix, they make the white. How about white light, and let's take out red. What do you get? You start with a flashlight, and you filter out red. What two colors are... Oh, yes. 
Cyan, he's correct. What two colors are left? Blue and green. And they combine to make cyan. What if you filter out yellow? Uh, yeah, what the hey? Yellow is red and green. So what's left? Blue. Blue. All right. That was additive color mixing. Now let's do subtractive. Black, that's right. And a lot of people use black as K. So when you see CMYK, that's what the K means, black. So I'll use it. Don't want to use B, that'll confuse us with blue. So cyan and yellow filtered make what light will get through or reflect off of those two pigments? Got one vote. And he's right! Green. Again, this blocks. What two colors make up cyan? Blue and green. So it blocks red. You can think of cyan as not red. Kind of like anti-red. And yellow is anti-blue. So the only one that gets through is green. Uh, how about one more? What's um, cyan and magenta? Ah, yeah, now people have thought about it. It's blue. Cyan lets blue and green light through. Blue and green. Blue and green. So it's not red. Magenta lets red and blue. So it's not green. Blue is the only one that gets through both. It's the only one that's not blocked or absorbed. See how we play this game? Good. So artists and we won't knock artists. They still say the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. But it's not accurate. And it's not based on how true colors mix. If you take true red and true blue and mix them, you don't get a true purple. But if you do take these three, you can get any other color. Those are the true primaries for subtractive. And they do kind of look red. Magenta looks reddish and cyan looks bluish. But those are the true shades that you've seen that work. So with that in mind, you can explain uh, why the sky is blue. Anybody already know? Who's already had you know, a nephew or child ask them, why is the sky blue? If not, you will. Have you ever asked your parents? Why, why is the sky blue? Based on what you know, you might not know what's going on yet, but if you see the sky as blue, what's happening color-wise? It's reflecting blue light. Absolutely. Blue light must be coming from the sky to our eyes. So which, uh, which colors aren't? Red and green. Something must be happening to them. They must be getting absorbed or at least deflected from our eye. And that's exactly what happens. The sky is blue through, we call it selective, i use the term the book used, selective scattering. The white light from the sun, if you go in space, the sun's white. White, all colors come into our atmosphere and the particles, based on their size, scatter some of the colors. They're like little uh, stumbling blocks. And hydro or nitrogen and oxygen are really small. That's mostly what the air atmosphere is made up of. They're really small. And so they have a bigger effect on the smaller waves, which is the blue-violet side. They have higher frequencies, shorter waves, so they get affected more by the small particles. And so they, blue, they scatter off the blue in all directions. 
And some of it comes down to us, and hey, the sky looks this nice blue. The longer waves, red and green, do get scattered, but not as much. So the blue dominates, and that's why the sky is blue. And then the sun is white in space, but we perceive it as yellow because yellow is not blue. And Excellent. Did I write that one down? Yeah, yellow is not blue. So if you get rid of the blue from the white sun, what's left? Red and green. Make it through more. And red and green combine to make yellow. And that's why the sun looks yellow to us. How about a sunset? What color is a sunset? More of an orange and yet red, right? They go to longer wavelengths. So what must be happening? The diff yeah, there is a different angle of attack. If here's the earth, and here's the atmosphere, not the scale. <laughs> if the sun's up here, it only gets through this much. If the sun's over here, it has to go through more. So there's more scattering, more chances for interactions. The more, even more blue gets scattered out. Some of the green starts being significant now. And what are you left with? Even longer wavelengths, the red side, red and orange, because there's less green. And yeah, the sun looks more orange. We can do that. I'm going to need... You can do this at home. This is a try this at home experiment. Take some water and shine light through it. You'll see what color it is. All right. That's going to need to be darker. Want well, your flashlight, Brian? Let's try this. This is called a diffraction grating. It's like a prism, and it splits the white light up into its colors. So the red, green, and blue. Here's a container of water. And you can see on the left, it's clear. It's still white. Here's the water. So you still get red, green, and blue through. Oh. I knew I forgot something. All right, let's hear. If you take a little milk or pine salt, very, very little, and mix it in the water, you can put little particles in it that start to scatter the light. You can see already that trying to go through a little bit of atmosphere, it scatters out some of the blue. It's getting dimmer and a little redder. Let's go through more atmosphere. Even less blue. Some of the green's starting to disappear. See how it's looking oranger? And even more. If you go through too much, you can get a nice deep red-orange sunset because you've taken out the blue and a lot of the green and you can probably barely see the red here. It does get darker. If our atmosphere was really thick, we wouldn't see the sun at all. But look what color this, this beaker looks to you. Blue. Does it look blue to you, I hope? A pale blue? Maybe it's more obvious with more light. Ah, that's too intense. <laughs> it should look a little bluer. Let me grab that flashlight. I can shine it through. See, it's white. Shine it through. And does it look oranger to you, the light that's coming through? That's a sunset. But the blue light's getting scattered out. And it might be more obvious when you try it at home. The, the light from the side looks bluer. Somebody gave me this rock. It might be more obvious. You shine light on it. Where the light enters it, it gets scattered. And near the flashlight side, the rock looks bluer. But as more and more blue gets scattered, look at the other end, the right end to you. See how it gets yellower and oranger? So our sky is blue because it selectively scatters blue, allowing the lower frequencies to get through 
And that's why we see a yellow sun. And at sunset, even darker or deeper orange and red. Does that make sense? All right, I guess we ran out of time. The same idea works for uh, water and clouds. And I'll mention that at the beginning of next lecture.